Okay, so for, uh, for the past uh, four days, you know, I was, I'd be very easily tempted to say good morning and happy Sabbath. And today I'm so much happy to tell you all good morning and happy Sabbath. So can I get a happy Sabbath from you all in the chat box? Can I get a word happy, of happy Sabbath? Happy, Sab happy Sabbath, sister. Happy, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Okay. So it is really happy to be with God's people. Happy Sabbath, 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 sister. God. Happy Sabbath, sister. And so it is very much happy to be with God's people, to share the love of God. And I'm also eagerly happy and to enjoy the Sabbath with you. So for the past four days, we were learning so many things, so many little, little things from the miracle of God. It was wonders in the gospel. It was absolutely wonder. So today we're going to learn, you know, uh, this uh, sermon was prepared by me for the, uh, in the last Saturday and it was a Sabbath blessing for me. So I was just, when I was planning for a series, I just thought, let me also share this Sabbath blessing with you all. So before going on to today's uh, sermon, I have a story to tell you. You all know Abraham Lincoln, okay? So when Abraham Lincoln, once when he was traveling by the ways of Mississippi, he saw many people uh, giving the sla uh, sl slaves auction. So they were selling the slaves and the auction was bridded. So there were so many people who were separated. Husbands were separated from the wives. Wives were separated from the husband. Family members were separated. And this family members were all crying. So Abraham Lincoln saw the state and he, his prayer was, let me read a prayer for you. I call the eternal God to witness that if I ever get a chance to hit that thing, I will hit it hard. So his prayer was, Lord, if I get a chance, if I personally get a chance of breaking this thing of slavery, I will surely hit it hard. And then after a few years, it was Abraham Lincoln who gave a full stop to this act of slavery. Today, for the past four days, we were learning one beautiful thing. And that thing was about personal reaction or personal encounter, personal relationship with Christ. Now tell me, we were all praying for so many days. For the past four days, personally, we were learning that we need to have a personal contact with Christ. Now tell me, before you joined for today's prayer, today's Adventist prayer ministry, did you all have a personal prayer with you? Did you read your Bible? Can the souls that pray today rise up their hands? Yes, Yes, there were few people who had a personal relationship. You know what? Lincoln had a personal thought. He made sure he prayed that, Lord, give me a chance to hit it hard. Are we asking God? Are we asking God today? For the past four days, it is not only merely learning. It is not only hearing by one year and leaving it out by another year. It is very important that we hit it hard. The things that we learn. You know what? It is not we only learning. It is also Sir, uh, Satan who is sitting next to us hearing what we speak. And if Satan is hearing, surely he'll tempt us so hard. But pray like Abraham Lincoln. That is what we are going to learn today in this habit. Pray hard as Abraham Lincoln. Lord, help me to hit it hard. As I hit it hard, thou will make miracles in my life. Thou will do wonders in my life. So let this be our prayer today. You know, what was John Knox's prayer? His prayer was, give me Scotland or I die. Pray for yourself first, not as the entire country. Pray for your personal change. Lord, give me my personal encounter with you. Give me my personal change in my life so that I may do wonders in others' life. Let this be our prayer today because for the past four days, it is not only learning. It is a waste of time if we keep on learning, just learning, rather than applying it in our life. So let this be our prayer today. Let us all bow down our heads before we go on to today's sermon. Gracious Heavenly Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for this happy Sabbath that thou hast given us, Father. Lord, we know, Father, help us to apply the same prayer of Abraham Lincoln. Help us to do or help us to pray for ourselves first, to hit hard everything that is obstacle in our lives. Be with us, Father, for we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. For the past four days, we were learning about gospel and wonders. It was from gospel in nature, gospel in healing, gospel in transformation, and even gospel in the demonic man. So today we are going to learn 
the gospel or the wonder in the Sabbath. So there is something, some beautiful lesson that Sabbath is going to teach us. And this is from the invalid at Bethesda. Okay. So being uh, this uh, miracle, we can see it in John chapter 5, verses 1 to 50. So let me share uh, the summary part of this uh, miracle. So just a minute. Okay. So this invalid at Bethesda is found in John chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. In Jerusalem, there was a pool called Bethesda where disabled people were gathered. Angel of the Lord would stir the waters and the first one into the pool would be healed. Jesus went to the pool and saw a man who had been an invalid for 38 years and asked him, do you want to be healed? Jesus told him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Immediately he was healed. He departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who healed him. So this is the summary of the first miracle in the Sabbath. So we all know the first miracle of Jesus was turning the water into wine. But the first miracle in the Sabbath was this miracle, the invalid at Bethesda, followed by the demonic in the synagogue. So first Sabbath miracle, which was the first Sabbath miracle? This one, the invalid at Bethesda was the first Sabbath miracle. So we might all have heard uh, a literal or another way of learning this uh, miracle. So I have also heard it. We, the Seventh-day Adventists, they'll uh, separate this Bethesda, the word Bethesda, be the SDA. So that Bethesda, if we split it, we'll be getting be the Seventh-day Adventist. So we're going to learn, apart from this, we're going to learn three lessons today, three beautiful lessons that will surely change our lives. The first thing which we are going to learn is, let me read verse 2 for you. Uh, like, sorry, uh, John chapter 5, verse 5 for you. And a, set, a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 30 and 8 years. So we can see a man who had an infirmity. He was the invalid and he had the infirmity for 38 years. So you know what? He was, was there believing, trusting in that only pool. He, he didn't have his trust in God. He was having his trust only in the pool of Bethesda for how many years? 38 long, long years. The first lesson which we are going to learn today is we may be also the same as this invalid man. For the past 19 years, I am I being only trusting on my abilities? Am I only trusting on my talents? Am I only trusting on my parents? Am I only trusting on my possessions, professions, anything that I have rather than trusting in God? But I might be like that, but Christ is not. Christ comes to us. He comes to us directly with a call that, do you want to be healed? Think of it today. For the past 40 years, for the past 67 years, for the past 70 years, Am I trusting or having my hope only on the things which I have? Am I failing to have trust in God? But think of it today. He is ready to come to you. He is ready to come personally to you, not as a whole, not as a church, not as a ministry, not as anything as a group. He is ready to come to you personally, to give you a personal touch, to give you a personal healing. He is ready to tell you, never believe in this worldly things. Believe in me. Trust in me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Are we ready? Are we ready to set away everything that we had our trust for the past 19 years? The first lesson is this man, this invalid man in Bethesda had 38 years of suffering with his own self, with his selfish things. He had 38 years of suffering. But when Christ came into his life, it was just a minute of miracle. When he had put his entire hope in Christ, he stood up. He went happily walking, leaping, and praising God. This same experience is ready for your and my life. We are around nine people, around ages of 19 to 70 or 80. Think of it. How many years, for the past how many years, are we struggling with our personal selfish things? Are we ready to give away every worldly things to tell God, Lord, for the past 19 years, I am like this, but now I'm ready to accept your call. I am ready to accept your personal encounter so that my life will be as same as this invalid man, the same change I could feel in my personal life. So let this be the lesson for today first. 
are we ready? Are we ready to leave away everything, leave away everything that was an obstacle to meet Christ, to accept Christ in my life as my personal savior? In this Sabbath, let us take a decision. Sabbath, you know, there are a few things which God has declared holy and this Sabbath is also a holy day. Let us think of it. Are we ready to take up a decision to leave away everything? If it is cell phone, no, no problem. Let me leave it for God. If it is my eyes, let me leave it for God. It is okay. If it is a hand, the Bible very clearly says, clearly says any organ, anything that is that stands as an obstacle for Christ, let me all take it away. Let me all leave it for God. Are we ready to take up this decision for him today? Think of it. A huge sacrifice, a huge sacrifice of giving the life of Christ has been done for us. Are you not ready to give your life for Christ today? Think of it. Let this decision be of us today. The second lesson was this, decide, this Jews had hardened the Sabbath. They have hardened the laws so that no one, it was difficult for the people to obey it. They said in verse 10, when we read, the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, it is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. The disciples hardened the Sabbath and they said, it is not lawful to carry thy bed, to move from one place to one place. It is not lawful to be healed. But Christ's intention was, it is not necessary that you carry your bed or you carry your uh, anything, but Christ asked you to carry your burden to him. Cast every burden on him, for he is ready to take care of it. So Christ calls us, it is not to take our entire uh, bed or to take our entire thing and go, entire uh, processions that we have, entire wealth that we have to go to Christ. The only thing which that man had was his bed. Christ never asks us to take everything that we go, to take our processions, to take our professions, to take our wealth and go to him. He asks us, take your burdens. He tells us to take what we have, the hardest thing in our life, to take it to him. Let this be the second lesson that we learn today. Take your burdens, whatever it may be. He is ready. He is powerful. Our God is mighty. Our God is wonderful. He is the way maker and he has all the ability. He is strong enough to carry ourselves, to carry our burdens. Are we ready to take our burdens to him. So this is the main Sabbath lesson that we are going to learn today. We think we, it is not lawful to do good to others. It is, it is not like that. It is lawful to do good to others, to love one, one another, to carry each other's burden, to show the love of Christ, to pray for each one, to heal someone. It is lawful. But before that, are we carrying our burdens to Christ? Before sharing, this invalid man at Bethesda did a wonderful ministry after he was healed. But before he was doing this ministry, he had a personal touch with God. He carried his burdens with Christ for his life to be changed. Before a ministry that I do today, do today, before I share a gospel today, before I do something for the Lord, do I have a personal encounter? Do I take the burdens, everything, whatever it may be? It can be a debt or it can be a sickness. It can be a secret sin. It can be anything. It can be a family problem, anything. Are we ready to take that to Christ before we share the gospel? So this is the second lesson that we are going to learn from the invalid at Bethesda. The third lesson is a beautiful lesson. Do you know why there are so many problems? Why there are trials and temptations at church? Why there are problems among brothers and sisters? That is because we put ourselves first. We think we need to give uh, we need to receive so much appreciation. If we think it is important that myself is put first, people and people appreciate me. People think that Elfman is a very good preacher. We think ourselves must be put first. But Christ never expects that from us. Christ wants self-sacrificing love that has to be that has to come out of, of our lives. In this miracle, we see Christ never stood there. He never stood there for appreciation or he never stood there for that invalid man to go, oh, thank you so much, Lord. He never expected that. But after once he was healed, he moved on to the next place. He moved on to the next option where 
he could heal some other man so that he uh, his love can be shared to everyone the third lesson for today is do not put yourself first do not stand up for appreciation do not wait for appreciation do not you know if you stop putting yourself first these problems will faint away think of it in a church we think that my praise uh, my praise my prestige should never be let down my name should, my name and fame should come up like something rather than being christ's name glorified think of do you and do i myself have a character of such is pride coming up bubbling in our life but bible very clearly says when pride comes then comes disgrace and shame think of it is my ministry working on only name and fame is my prayer is only for man's sake is only to let people know oh this girl this young woman is praying so hard is doing something for the lord wow it is not for it it is no not for it we have to learn it today as we live in this last days it is very important we put away all our selfish things first take up the mindset that we do this ministry we do this prayer we do this work of gospel sharing only for the sake of Christ. this is not us this ministry that we do this word of god that we share this things everything that we do in this last days is not our own acts it is all god we have get it from we have got it from him everything and we are sharing to others then think of it how can this pride and praises can be ours it all belongs to one of uh only one it is christ but even that christ was not ready to accept it he was not standing there waiting that every people will come oh lord you are wonderful he was not waiting for it think of our lives today think of it how many times i personally would have created a problem in the church could have created a problem in the society could have created a problem in the family stating that i myself is not recognized my good deeds is not seen my good deeds is not spoken out loud in the church my good deeds my donations in the church is not spoken out loud in the church think of it for how many years are we carrying this burdens of life for the past 38 years that man that invalid at bethesda he carried it when christ came into his life he was ready those things for the 38 years which he had he was ready to leave it think of it am i carrying anything any burdens in my life am i care, carrying for the past 19 years am i ready to leave them all in the feet of jesus am i ready to cast them all for he is ready to carry he is ready to take care of you think of it today the three lessons for today is the first one am i carrying burdens i don't know your particular ages but around 92 or 70 or 80 think of it is the burdens of life is each and every burdens of life is cast at the feet of jesus am i leaving them all down at the feet of jesus am i recognizing first i am carrying some burdens certain burdens that stands as an obstacle between me and christ think we don't have time Ellen White says very clearly says we are in the end days but now we are it is time for us to share the gospel but we are in the time of preparing ourselves first we lack we we lack short over here but if not today when do we change if not this minute when do we submit ourselves to christ if not today when will we cast our burdens to christ if not today then will be never tomorrow think of it if i say let me live this day and let i will change tomorrow think of it if you die today if you go on a very critical stage today if you undergo anything that is very tremendous today if there is a question mark for tomorrow where will you go and stand where will your stand be will i go empty handed into the lord will i go with a shame the second lesson is it was not lawful to carry the bed according to the jewish principles okay it is perfectly according to the jewish principles it was not lawful according to verse 10 when we read in john 5 it was not lawful to carry the bed but christ tells us christ gives us a call to everyone who is gathered here 
each and every one of us, he is giving us call, cast your burdens on me. It is not necessary that you carry your own burdens. Give it to me. Everything, whatever it might be. It can be any secret sin. Anything it can be. Come. Come unto me. Cast every burdens on me and I am ready to take it. Are we ready to cast our burdens in Christ? Are we ready? And that is the question for today. And this Sabbath, let us take, it, you know, it is not important that we wait for New Year. We wait for New Year to change. Oh Lord, I am ready to give my life. It is not necessary. Every new day can be a day of taking a new decision. It can be every new day can be a change in our life. It is not necessary that we wait for my birthday. Oh Lord, today is my birthday. Until next birthday, I will follow this. It is not necessary because it is not very sure that I will see my next birthday. It is not sure that I will live after I complete the sermon. It is not sure. Nothing is assurance and nothing is assured in this life except the love of Christ. He is the only assured promise in our life. Think of it today. This Sabbath is given to you. This sermon is a sermon. Nobody can say, I don't know, because this sermon is a sermon of condemnation. It is a sermon for you and me to change our lives today. Think. It is high time that we change our own lives, because until and unless I am not pure, how can I share the word of God? Because until and unless I am not pure and I share, others will point at you are not perfect. You are not. We know we are not, but if Christ is ready to make ourselves pure, think of it. It is high time. There is no more time to waste. No more seconds to waste. Think. Pray, Lord, give me the strength. Give me the power to lay my burdens on your hands. Excuse me. To put away everything. To lay my entire burden in your feet. Think of it. Is my life, is my life bonded and bounded in Christ? Think of it today. The third lesson that we are going to learn today is Jesus never stood for appreciation. Jesus never stood there. Oh, oh you are all going to appreciate me. No, he knew that this words of appreciation will hinder his ministry, will hinder his path. Christ made sure that he went on meeting the next, next souls. When you are doing a ministry, when somebody appreciates, tell them, praise God for it. Tell them, let all praise be to God because he is the one. He is the reason for this ministry. He is the reason that you are acknowledged in this world. The bonus point which we are going to learn today, I love sharing bonus points, is from Eagle. Everybody is familiar with this. You know what Eagle does? At a particular point of time, when it feels itself weak, when it feels it can never do anything without this process, it makes sure that it removes every feathers, it plucks, it goes, undergoes a process of pain. It makes sure it plucks every feathers, every nail, even its beaks, it leaves out everything and then waits for some time waits for the feathers to grow up again, waits for the nails, waits for its beaks to grow up again to come up and then it flies high more than what we all thought. And this is a lesson for us today. Let our lives be as eagles. Let us all remove everything, every sin. If it is watching YouTube shots, if it is watching something in hot stuff, if it is anything, let us all leave everything, anything that is fine. It is all important. Let us leave out everything, whatever it might be. If it is for professions or if it is for a possession at a church, if it is uh, properly keeping a Sabbath day, let it be anything in our life. Are we ready? Are we ready to put away everything? Are we ready to put away, even if it is uh, a personal thing in my life? Let us all think for it. When we put away everything in the, uh, in the cross, in the bird, in, if we lay every burden in the feet of Christ, he is ready. He is ready to give us a life of reformation, reaffirmation. He is ready. And as the eagle grows, you know, if it lives for three years after this process, it can leave, live more years after that. Think of it. When Christ personally comes into my life, when I, accept, when I am ready to put away everything that 
is standing as an obstacle. He is ready to make my life to fly higher than I think. In my personal ability, I can fly like a feather. But if Christ comes into my life, I can fly like an eagle. Let me ask you a question today. We had two years of lockdown. We were all believing and trusting in our professions. We were all trusting in our managers. We were all trusting in our, uh, M, uh, our head in the company. Think of it. Most of the people lost their jobs. And who was the one who sustained us? Who was the one who saved our lives? Who was the one who made us to gather as a family to stand over here to praise his wonderful name? Think. It is high time we put away everything in the fear of the cross. It was Christ all alone who led us wonderfully and miraculously. We had, in our family, we had two, we had grandparents who were very sick. It was God who led them. It was not by our own will and might. We had a doctor in the family, but it was no use. It was Christ. He was a heavenly doctor who, who led us. It was Christ all alone. He was the only one who sustained us. He was the only one who made us live and praise his holy name. Think, it is high time. We take up a decision. We stand, we arise and praise his holy name. And for it, a personal encounter with Christ is very important. Think, where do we lack? Where do we lack in certain instances? Do not wait for New Year because New Year cannot be yours. Omicron is far coming, but if you have your trust in God, you can survive. If you have, think if it is necessary, Lord, if it is necessary for me to survive, if it is necessary for me to share your gospel living in this world, then I submit everything to your feet, Lord. Take it, take care of me. It is not me alone. I am not living for you. I have to reach souls. There are so many people who doesn't know who you are. There are so many people who doesn't know what Adventism is. Let this be our prayer today. Let's bow down our heads for a short word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for this Sabbath blessing, Father. We know, Lord, we put ourselves first and we put you away from our life. Help us to be as eagles, to put away, to pluck out everything that stands as an obstacle to share your gospel. Be with us, Father. Help us not to be only as thinkers, but to be doers in our life. It is not what we believe, but what we practice in our life, Father. Be with us, guide us and guard us. Help us to come into your house in heaven. For we pray all these things in the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let all the Lord's people say, Amen. 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 I request Amen. Sister Elvina to stay online uh, just uh, one minute. And uh, thank you, Sister, for this wonderful message and also uh, preaching with passion, preaching with uh, much of energy, and also showing the uh, intense um, desire you have for the ministry. So before we go into a session of a prayer, I request again Sister Elvina to share with us shortly about your ministry so that we all know uh, what activities you are doing. Okay, so uh, let me, before I start telling my ministry, I just wanted to tell you what happened in my life, okay? So until and unless I share what has happened in my life, I can't share you uh, my ministry. So uh, first, let me tell you uh, who my parents are. My parents are Pastor Prayer Elmo and Dr. Shajina Elmo. So my mother is a doctorate in computer science and my dad is a pastor. So my dad, like, let me tell my dad's history in a very short form. Daddy was the fifth son and daddy's parents were from a Hindu background. So as from the Hindu background, they were like, uh, their parents wanted a son to be born. And first one was a daughter, second one was a daughter, third one was a doctor, daughter, fourth one was a daughter. And my grandparents' uh, parents were forcing them and they were telling, come back to Hinduism, come. Uh, what you do is uh, give sacrifices and ask sorry to our Hindu God so that they will bless you with the son. So this was, they were, my grandmother was uh, literally tortured by her mother-in-law. So this was happening in their life. And my grandpa and grandma, they what they thought was they wanted to remain in their faith. They wanted to remain their trust in Jesus. And they were all praying. Uh, my fifth, uh, my grandma conceived again and it was her fifth 
uh, delivery and when uh, she delivered a baby boy that baby boy was literally dead okay this is a literal story and that baby boy was literally dead and grandma was in unconscious state and she didn't knew grandpa knew it and he started crying his literal prayer was he was praying in the corridors of the hospital everybody was literally seeing him and he knelt down knelt down over there and he was praying lord save my son i want my son back and this was his prayer and that baby boy was taken into mortuary and he was placed in the mortuary with all other dead bodies and there was one nurse who's uh, who was my grandfather's relative and his grandfather was pleading the nurse make some ways for my son to live and the nurse was very firmly telling how can we how can who are we are we god to bring back a life into a dead son are we god but uh, my grandpa was pleading again and again and this nurse called a doctor from nagakoi it is around uh, 30 kilometers i guess a one hour travel and she called a doctor from nagakoi and that doctor came like uh, because of my persistent uh, irritation of my grandfather that nurse called the doctor and the doctor came and took my dad's leg i mean sorry that boys leg from the mortuary they, they took the boy and in this place from their leg they did a minor operation a very simple thing and that baby boy which was dead came back to life and that baby boy was named as prayer elmo the doctor's name is elmo johnson and that baby boy the prayer of my grandfather was uh, was heard by god and that baby boy was named as prayer elmo and that is my dad who is living as a living testimony in front of you all so his he god chose my dad from his birth he was dead but god gave him back life and this was a Amen. real medical miracle in our life yes. so this was his uh, life story and my grandpa uh, made sure that my dad will do ministry and my dad uh, he learned and his uh, later days he became a, a principal of a, a school he, he had so many works he worked as a teacher and he worked as a, he had so many works and he came up as a principal two years or one year back he had a thought that he has to do something for the lord and everybody like he was sharing this and everybody told you are a principal you are with a, a higher profession and why do you want why do you want to step down from a higher position like uh, you know tamil they used to say nee avan getta uttu kudukra it is of higher profession a prestigious profession why do you want to come down and struggle as a pastor and my dad told uh, i am you know there were so many instances where my dad has faced death and he has come up he was uh, he drowned in water he faced a very a dreadful accident everything he was he was stating everything one by one and he was telling this same god who called me from my birth has some plan for me and my dad he discontinued uh, two years back he had a change of profession and came to the lord's ministry so this is his life and we understood his calling but grandfather like after like in his later when my youthful days of dad my grandfather wanted my dad to be a medic or a doctor okay so he uh, he was paid fees in cmc ludhiana but even at that time uh, daddy came to Uh, spicer admins university he didn't go and do his doctor studies so this the same life history of my dad projects in my life so it is an exact uh, carbon copy in my life my sister is doing her last year medical studies uh, she is doing her uh, doctorate studies and my parents also wanted me to be a doctor because you know usually people say right uh, yeah elmo has made his uh, elder daughter as a doctor and elder enga one will be also a doctor but i was praying lord what is your will in my life what is your mission in my life i don't want to be a worthless doctor but a worthy servant of yours so this was my prayer and i was just asking lord tell me what is your will in my life tell me if it is anything i am ready to even if it is a school teacher i am ready to do if if it is anything i was just waiting for the word of the lord and you know what i was preparing for neat and Uh, in one month i completed studying the entire book of biology so my parents had greater hopes on me and they were just thinking that okay my elder daughter will also crack neat and then she'll do her medicine studies it was their wish in, uh, for my life and i was just praying i had so many doubts lord tell me lord show me what is your will in my life so uh, my birth also has a history my mother us uh, first delivery was a c section and i was a normal so uh, normal delivery so even at that time they used to uh, tell me that 
this baby was a blessing from birth so even uh, in my uh, youthful days i was just asking god lord show me what is your will in my life and one day i had a dream it was a literal dream stating that i chose your dad from birth i i brought him from his prestigious uh, profession to the profession of the kingdom of heaven so i am calling you for the same purpose so that was the dream and the next day morning i told my parents i'm not going to do medicine i'm going to be a theology i'm going to do uh, my uh, theological studies religious studies at spicer and i'm going to do uh, mich missionary work and my parents were literally shocked when i because they were all having hopes that i will be uh, doing a doc i'll be a doctor same as my sister and they were all shocked my mother was started crying it was a literal shock for everyone because they had hopes on me and i made them understand mother it is not that it is not what god uh, it is not what we think it is god's ministry and if we if he calls us for a higher mission it will be wonderful it is not what we think his plan is the best for our life so and then they were all okay and i like it was a little tough for me to convince them everybody who met me my aunt my uh, relatives my uncle everybody who told me asked me what will you do for a income you know how much they pay uh, in mission what will you do for a income where will you go and start who will marry you even they were uh, speaking about my marriage now i was telling you know what in the 12 tribes of israelites the tribe of levi was very special god did uh, god told them not to split any land not to split any property for the uh, for the tribe of levi because god was their inheritance and that was my answer to them i told them never worry god will take care of me his he is my inheritance what else do i need heaven is my house what else do i need he is my father and everything that belongs to him is mine what else do i need so that was my stronghold and that made me strong because there were so many people who were telling what will you do they will not give you an ordination as a girl what will you do where will you go and stand what will you do will you go and stand in a school as a teacher will that be your end there were so many questions but it was god who led me so miraculously and during this covid days and when i decided to do the lord's ministry god told me do uh, do uh, something that you can do and i was praying i uh, from my childhood i love nature and i was asking god lord i have left medical missionary for you i have put down the hopes of my parents now tell me what i should do for you i want to do something this two years i'm going to just be and it is going to be a uh, very wasting time tell me what i should do and then the lord told me do bit for a bun you know the name bit for a bun means asking god requesting pleading him for that day's manna spiritual manna from him so that it was named by my dad we all prayed for it the lord told me you know uh, it is very common like uh, uh, today's thoughts or this are very common and people are people don't listen but this bit for a bun made people to think what bit for a bun is what is something special what bit for a bun means and today it is more than uh, 534 days i guess god has led so miraculously more than one and a half years god has been leading me so well and i trust in him you know i don't know what will be my stand where will will i go and work but i think that every word that comes out of my mouth will be a word of hope to someone who is drowning in their life who is upset in their life so this is what how has god led me so this bit for one ministry what i thought is before we had the education at schools nature was the best lesson the travel of israelites from uh, egypt to canaan they learned wonderful lessons from nature and these lessons from nature will be a lesson for us in our lives too so this is my life pray for me uphold me in your prayer so that nothing no other temptations in our life as i am in my youthful state there will be so many temptations there will be so many ups and downs uphold me in your prayer be with me so that god will use me wonderfully in his ministry so that is my ministry and that is how god is leading me amen 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 thank you sister for this wonderful testimony you are a living testimony and you've been a blessing to many and may god bless you more in your ministry and also give the courage and the encouragement to reach more things for god in the coming days yes. at this time uh, we will be all uh, going into a groups of twos and threes and we'll be praying for 10 minutes and we'll come back to the main room and close our session so please do wait as you are going to be assigned